the devotional which I will be sharing with you is a is based on a passage which is actually well known. It's Psalm 23. Uh, I just hope to highlight some important thoughts here which can serve to encourage us. This is personally a very precious psalm to me and I find a lot of consolation and comfort and encouragement from this psalm. So allow me to read to you Psalm 23. I know you're already familiar with this and you have probably memorized it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows, or in the traditional translation, runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. I, as I said, I just have a few uh, thoughts from God's Word to share with you. Uh, it is, of course, this is known as the Shepherd's Psalm, but actually when you think deeply about it or when you carefully read the passage, you will, of course, discover that actually there are three images that are being presented in this psalm. It's not only about the shepherd and the sheep, it's also about about the traveler and his uh, companion and finally it's about the guest and his host but they have a common thread there is something that uh, bind all these three images together and uh, it is this that uh, god cares for his people from beginning to end now and of course, David wrote this psalm. He was a shepherd before he was a he, he became a king. So the, the 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 image of a shepherd, which he is presenting here, is something that he got from his own personal experience. And the bottom line here is that a shepherd really cares for his sheep. And that's what happened to David. If you remember, he would, he 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 would fight bears and lions to protect his sheep. He would care for his sheep. And the the the, the point here, which is dear to my heart, which really made an impression on me, is the fact that life would truly be miserable if we did not have God for our shepherd. If we went through life or if we go through life alone we would simply be lost and helpless and unable to deal with the dangers and threats that are just so many in this life we need a shepherd who will provide for us protect us and preserve us someone a shepherd who will care for us all throughout the way and lead us safely home and that's what sub 23 is all about so the first verse says the lord is my shepherd i shall not want or in other translations i will not lack anything good which points to the thought that our shepherd god is the great provider and maybe the key verse here is uh he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. In other words, he is the one who is directing our way, who is taking care of our path, leading us, and all of our life is actually under his guidance, control, and supervision. And, and he does that for his own sake. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the real reason why he loves us and cares for us cannot really be found in us, but in himself. He is just a, a good and loving God and he has decided and determined to love his people and care for his uh, sheep. So for his name's sake, 
he he performs the task of being a shepherd towards them and it's as i said it's for his name's sake the right paths the the, the uh, uh, pleasant paths and it's a path that has many dangers in it but it will lead safely home because god is there our shepherd and so as our provider that's what a shepherd does he provides for the sheep He makes us lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside still waters. He restores our soul. And the key ideas here is that God, our shepherd, He provides. He uh, gives peace. And He he gives renewal. And uh, He does it for His name's sake. And uh, in other words, because that's who He is. He, he, he loves us. But... Okay, if you go to verse 4, there seems to be something puzzling here. Because the shepherd cares for us, he provides everything for us, everything seems to be all right, and uh, everything seems to be abundant and well taken care of. But then there's the valley of the shadow of death. And what we learn here is that the fact that the shepherd cares for us, and leads us to lie down in green pastures and besides still waters there will be prosperity there will be blessing there will be peace but at the same time there will be the valley of the shadow of death there will be distresses there will be afflictions there will be adversity sickness pain it simply means that life with god life under the care and provision of the shepherd does not exempt us who trust in him from From adversity, from from trials, from difficulties and hardships in life, and that makes you wonder. Here is the perplexing thing: if the shepherd provides for everything, and he he gives us peace, renews our soul. How do you reconcile that with this other side of life? That that there's going to be a lot of of trials. And in fact, when you you read the experiences of Paul, for example, it, oh, he he was not exempt from the worst kinds of of trials, even 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 death uh, itself. So how, how do you reconcile those those, those two—a life of comfort and blessing and provision, and then a life of uh, hardship, trials? And and it seems to me the answer to that is the green pastures, the the uh, still waters. The important thing is not really the material blessings. It's it's God Himself, our green pastures, our uh, still waters. It's God. It's not so much because be, because if you have if you have God, He gives His beloved sleep. There's the peace, okay. And uh, if you have God, godliness with contentment is great gain. And there's there's the green green pastures. There the, the refers us it says taste and see that the Lord is good. So the goodness of life is the Lord Himself. Even if you have everything, but God is not your shepherd, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? But if you have God, what does the Bible say? Uh, uh, I think is it Psalm seventy three. My heart and my flesh may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion for, forever. He is the green pastures. He is the still waters. If you have Him, if you have Him, then you are well provided for. You can afford to be content and you can afford to be joyful and thankful in all circumstances. And another related thought. What? is the fact that the important thing is God is there no matter how difficult life is so it says here even though i even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil so a little while ago we learned that i will not want i shall not want i will not lack any good thing but now we see that I will not I will not fear any evil. Why? Again the same answer. Because of God. I will not lack any good thing because of God. I have God. I have I have everything no matter what happens to me. Now, I will not fear because God is there. I mean, the the darkness might 
might really be a deep darkness. It might really be very dark in your life. We we are not unrealistic as as Christians. We 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 don't say that. Uh, I mean, the book of Ecclesiastes says that you don't really know what will happen to you, whether it's love or hate. No one knows. And even even James says that you cannot boast about tomorrow, but we can always claim that for the Christian life is good in an ultimate sense because God is there. I will not fear. God is my portion. I will not lack anything. And that's the important point. And finally, just to cut everything short, I won't be expounding everything. Uh, I'll just skip verse 5. I'll go straight to verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This verse actually reminds me of something in verse uh, in Psalm 73, which has a similar similar thought. Let me let me go there just to just to make sure. The important thing is we go through where we lie down in green pastures, but then we have to go through the valley of the shadow of death. But at the end of the day, the important thing is we reach home safely. And when we do so, it will make up for all our sorrows and troubles. So some, I have to go to Psalm 73 in closing because actually the thought there is very similar to Psalm 23. So it says here, Nevertheless, I am continually with you. There it is again. The, 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 the important truth about God's presence in all circumstances. Okay, it does not matter what my circumstances are. Nevertheless, nevertheless, the important thing is I am continually with you. That makes up for everything that God is always there and He will never leave me nor forsake me. You hold me. You hold my right hands. Someone, someone is not only guiding me. He's, prevent, he's making sure that I won't fall. I might stumble, but I won't utterly fall because He's holding my hand. You guide me with your counsel and afterward, and this is where it's really similar to Psalm 23, afterward, you will receive me to glory. I will go through the valley of the shadow of death, but afterward, the Lord will receive me to glory. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And you know what? Just one last comment. On that very beautiful statement here in Psalm 23, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. All the days of my life, no exception. The good days, the bad days, even the days when you think or you feel as if God is not there, it's a good day. Because all the days of my life, the love and mercy of the Lord, goodness and mercy follows me. I, I read somewhere, uh, uh, you can double check this, that the word follow is just too tame a word. It should be translated pursue. In other words, the goodness and mercy of God every day <laughs> runs after God's children, pursues you. And of course, that reminds us of the verse which says, uh, not only will he not withhold any good thing from those who fear him, but the Bible also says that he will not turn away from doing us good. The bent and inclination and ultimate disposition of God's heart towards his children is always to do good to them, even when he afflicts them. I think Psalm 119 does, Psalm 119 says, even when, when we're afflicted, it is good for me to have been afflicted for now. I keep your word. And, and that's how we should define goodness and mercy. Because one of the key thoughts here, that which is good in life is for God to be there. Okay? No matter what the circumstances are. So God himself is making sure that you will not depart from him. That you will always be near him because that is what is truly good. Even, even when you think about dwelling in, in his house forever, being received unto glory. What is good about that? It's not really mansions and golden streets and, you know, gem-studded uh, walls or things like that. It's God being there. What makes heaven a good place is the fact that our good 
God and loving Father is there and we're worthy and we're with Him. Goodness and mercy pursues us even in times of affliction because God is keeping us close to Himself and making sure that we will really be with Him forever. And that reminds me again of Psalm 73. In, in my mind, Psalm 23 and Psalm 73, they, they're connected. Because in that Psalm, in the last portion of that Psalm, the psalmist says, the psalmist says, As for me, it is good to be near God. That is what is truly good. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are there. I will fear no evil. Goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life, even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, because God is making sure that we will stay close to Him and always remember Him. And be reminded that He is with us. And finally, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.